Today I'm going to talk about something new from Stride, subscriptions. zero nine miles eight minutes 36 seconds per mile 210 watts on average for today going for a 50 minute workout as prescribed by my race training plan by stride now this is part of their new subscription and i know we're all kind of subscription overloaded at this point but this is a brand new offering from Stride. They're not even sure what to price it at yet. They just announced it today. So for now, it's free, available to all Stride users. I've had a chance to work with it for a little bit now. And today I went on a workout, which was 21 minutes of warm up, eight by 30 seconds of on at about mile pace, and then 30 seconds of recovery, and then followed up with another 21 minutes of cool down. Now, before I get into my thoughts on how this new subscription plan works, how these workouts all work, I do want to go over some disclosures. The Stride FootPod is a device that I purchased with my own money. They didn't send it to me. No one sent it to me. And no one's paying me to make this video. I did get early access to some of these features so that I could test them and make a video to coincide with their announcement for today. And I did have some communications because I had a couple of questions on some of the things that happened. I'll talk about that a little bit more. Normally, I don't like to have any communications from the time like a product gets delivered to me to the time that the video goes out, but I wanted to see if I could clear that up before this video got made. That was the only communication that we had. Otherwise, they've had no insight into my video footage or my thoughts before this video went up on YouTube. So with those disclosures out of the way, let's talk about the subscription model with Stride. First though, I think for those of you who don't know what Stride is, let's go over a really super brief primer on that. I've made lots of videos about Stride foot pods before. I'm not gonna link them out in the description because I don't want you guys to leave this video anyway, so I'll give you like the quickest description of what it is that I can. It's a device that clips onto the front of your shoe, super light, just clips onto the laces. And from there, it can measure your power, which is kind of like the output that you're putting out at your feet. The idea is that no matter whether you're going uphill, downhill, uh, what kind of terrain you might be on during a course. And even now they have wind versions. I don't have the wind version, but they have wind too. So no matter what even the wind is, you can be running at the correct level of exertion to perfectly pace your next race. I've been running with it on my feet for every single run. I can think of maybe less than five runs in since the time that I've had this device that I haven't run with it on. And every time I forget it, I'm always super annoyed because the value in this thing is not only in the data you get from a run, but the value that you get in the data from all your runs together because it gets to figure you out. So now that you understand a little bit what the Stride is, let's talk about the subscription plan. So the subscription plan for you, for Stride, like I said, it's free for you. Everyone that has a Stride right now to access this, you can start using it today. Uh, they say it's gonna be free at least through the first half of 2021. So pretty much everyone for their next marathon training block, you'll be able to do this. But what it does is it creates custom tailored race plans based on what it knows about you and the power that you're able to put out, your current level of fitness, your previous levels of fitness, your current level of training. And um, there's also a watch app. I could use it with my Apple watch. You can also use it with a Garmin watch as well. Those are the only two watches that are currently supported. And what it does is it gives you those custom training plans 
but also it gives you special analytics. And I, for me, I, I like collecting data is one thing, but where the data nerds really start to get excited is the analytics that you're able to do with those numbers. And the best part about these race plans, it's not like when you buy a race plan, maybe online somewhere where you get like the full like 12, 14 weeks, this updates with you as you go. And so uh, it's gonna be able to tailor itself to you as you get stronger throughout the course of your training plan. So let's talk about how all this works. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go into Stride and you're going to click on the button so that you can start using some of these subscription features because it's free. You don't have to put down a card. You don't have to sign up for anything. If you're already in the Stride app, if you're already in the ecosystem, you can start doing this today. So you're gonna first, you're gonna select what race event you're training for, give it a race date, uh, a training start date, like are you starting now, are you starting two weeks from now, that kind of thing. Then it asks you how many days a week you plan on training, how many hours a week you plan on training, and what day you wanna do your long run in. From there, you can pick a plan. Uh, I chose 10K for my options to just to kind of run it through the system. And um, I picked a, a date five weeks ahead of time. And then it gave me an option for a high volume plan and a low volume plan. I'm more of a high volume kind of guy. So I respond better to high volume rather than short and intense. So I went with the high volume plan. And then it started populating the rest of my calendar in the future with different workouts to do Six, I, w I wanted it to go seven days a week, but it wouldn't give me a seven day a week program. So it gave me activity, a run to do six days a week from now until the race date. I just picked an arbitrary date in the middle of November sometime. One of the nice things about this is that uh, as you're looking at the calendar, uh, it's pretty flexible. So you can kind of move some stuff around. So uh, for example, today's workout, I really wasn't supposed to do until Thursday, but I wanted to, and the today's workout was supposed to be just like an easy run. But that wouldn't have been all that interesting data wise to show you guys about. So I was able to move the schedule around and everything's done on the app with like long presses and you can reschedule things, move them around. So I moved them around. So that's how I created the plan and started getting some of these workouts. Then to actually use the workout, when I got there, I got my Apple Watch out and I went into the Stride app to start the workout. Instead of just starting a workout, I went to the workouts button. And then if you didn't see it right there, right away, there's like a fetch workouts kind of button. You click on that, it pulls it down from the cloud and then the workout that you're supposed to do that day shows up. You click on that and then you get started and you're off and running. And from then, once you do that, you get a new screen. So if you run in the with the Apple Watch and the Stride before, you're kind of familiar with like the basic level of information that it gives you. There's a whole new data screen that it gives you now. And it basically creates like, if you're familiar with like running with like a heart rate zone lock, or uh, a pace zone lock, it gives you a power zone lock, which is pretty cool. And so you could see how much time is remaining in whatever segment you're in. So like in the warm up segment for me today, it gave me a countdown from 21 minutes to zero. And it also let me know if I was right in the pace range, if I was a little high or if I was a little low, so I could adjust it as I went. Uh, and also data it shows is your current average for this entire kind of segment, whether it's the warm up or if it's one of your reps. And then it also gives you the average from the last segment as well. So quite a bit of data that it's giving you. Um, I found that it worked pretty well. Uh, there's a couple of things though that it didn't give me. I'm not sure I can count these as like knocks against it, but things that I just thought like, you mm, know, surprised that I couldn't figure out a way to do this. Uh, there isn't a way to show your heart rate on it. And so I thought that that'd be a big problem. I did have another watch with me just to kind of serve as a control. Uh, so I was able to see my heart rate there, but I wasn't able to see it in the stride app. And uh, I guess though, that doesn't matter because you're running by power. So the heart rate doesn't matter. Your pace really doesn't matter. Uh, it's just whether or not you're hitting that power number, especially if you're training solely by power. And so the heart rate didn't matter. I couldn't see the pace, at least on that new screen. If I switch to another screen by scrolling along the digital crown, I could get to that other screen of like the traditional stride data that you could see. So I could see my pace there, but I really wasn't focusing on that screen. But again, pace doesn't matter. You're focusing on, are you working yourself hard enough during the rep? Uh, and that's all that really mattered. So when it switched and when it came time to switch, um, I got a notification saying, now I'm on rep one, here's the zone that I'm supposed to stay in. And then I just had to run hard. It counted down from 30 seconds, cause this was a 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off kind of day, times eight. 
uh, and it would let me know if it was in the zone or not in the zone. And that's all that really mattered. So the nice thing about it is here in Eastern Iowa, it's hilly. There isn't a lot of flat. There's a slightly uphill or slightly downhill, sometimes moderately uphill and moderately downhill, but nothing's really flat. And so I normally, when I try to do interval work around here, I try to kind of not cheat, but I try to plan it out so that way the worst hills aren't on a work session and that might be on a rest session. I didn't have to worry about any of that here because whether I'm going uphill or downhill, all I care about is how hard I'm working. And I could just focus on that power number. It's not about hitting the right pace. So if I'm going uphill and I have to go a little bit slower, it's okay because I'm still working hard to fight against that incline. So that was a really nice thing. And that's been something that I've been already incorporating into my routine uh, even before the subscription model came out is the idea of when I'm doing interval work, because the intervals tend to be pretty small and normally I train by heart rate and heart rate always can't always keep up and respond to quick changes. Uh, I've been looking at, at power numbers as a way of doing that interval training. So definitely something that I was already very comfortable with. I was able to get in the zone uh, that it wanted me to be in, maintain it for as long as I needed to, and then it automatically went to my first rest period. And then it had a prescribed like level of intensity that I was supposed to be there as well for the 30 seconds rest period. And then it was just like over and over again, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off when you're running at a little of a kind of like at mile pace is pretty intense for someone that doesn't do a lot of speed work and kind of doesn't really like speed work. So by rep number six, I was just really feeling terrible, doing a lot of dry heaving, but uh, it was pretty exciting because it just felt like everything was happening so quickly. Like the workout was pretty much like over before I knew it, I was done with rep eight. And then I was there on for another 21 minutes of uh, cool down. Then at the end, for the after you're done with the cool down, you finish the whole workout, you get like a screen that says like thumbs up. I think it literally gave, I don't remember. I think it literally gave me like a thumbs up emoji and said, congratulations, you're done with the run. But just to test it out, I did keep running a little bit further and it kept measuring a little bit further too, which I like. Sometimes some apps on some watches, once you're done with like your workout, it like ends your activity. So even if you still wanted to run like another five, 10 minutes, um, because maybe you were on a big loop and the amount of time it takes you, you still have a little extra to run, it'll still keep recording and keep track of that as basically just like another rep or like another part or of the, of the cool down. So, very happy with how that's all working. But it wasn't perfect though. Like I mentioned, it didn't have heart rate, didn't have pace. But the other thing that it was missing that I really wished it had was like a countdown timer. So lots of other watches that I've used when you can put in structured workouts, it tells you like, it gives you like a countdown from five uh, to let you know, hey, you probably, you know, if it's a pretty intense interval, you might want to like ramp up a little bit or at least prepare for like that speed that you've got to turn on in a couple of seconds. This one really didn't. It just kind of like, I had to kind of like look at it. All right, five seconds left. Uh, that's pretty close. Oh, two seconds still left and then go. So that was kind of annoying. I wish there was like a countdown to it. And I wish that there were audible cues. There really weren't any. I could feel vibration on the wrist, but I was listening to music as well. And maybe because I was listening to music that kind of like superseded any audible cues, but I would have liked it for it to tell me like, you know, rep three or like rest three, like when I got to those sections. And if it could have told me in my ear, like what power range I was looking for, that would have been helpful. Because the other thing I didn't like about running the workout, at least as the app is designed today, is that I was looking for a certain range of power number that I was supposed to hit. And uh, it ended up being usually like a little bit faster than my, my mile pace. But uh, I didn't, I couldn't remember what it was. And it doesn't tell you on the watch what your range is. It only tells you if you're in the zone, above it or below it. But like I, at any point, if I was above or below, I didn't know if I was like pretty much right on the cusp and I could just coast at this level or if I was really high up and I should really pull it back or if I was really low and if I really had to push harder, I just didn't, I couldn't remember what the zone was. I have a hard time juggling numbers in my head when I'm running hard. So uh, if I could have had a, a indicator telling me like even just a visual indicator of where in the zone or how far outside the zone I am, that would have been really nice. In terms of after the run, the data that you're able to get, I mentioned there's some pretty cool analytics that you can look at. Uh, one of the things that you're gonna wanna do is when you're done with it and your stride foot pod uh, and the watch kind of like all syncs up, 
then you're gonna wanna go into the app and then pair the workout that you ran to your scheduled workout so that it can come, kind of combine those things together. Otherwise, it'll, it, for whatever reason, it doesn't know that the workout that you just did happens to coincide almost exactly with the workout that was scheduled for the day. But you have to like kind of go through an ac action to do that and so then you can look at both. And the benefit is then you could see like the workout as intended in terms of like your power graphs but then you can also see the workout as completed. So you could see intended versus actual, and I think that's pretty cool too. The other thing you can do is not only see that for the entire run, but you could splice it up between like your warm up, your cool down, and also your reps. And uh, lots of different apps will give you like the splits based on the different parts of your structured workout if you set it up ahead of time. But this will also, um, set it up so that you can look at what were just my reps. So like of the eight reps that I did at the power range that I needed to hit, what was my average pace across all eight reps without me having to do any sort of like weird math or kind of guess what they were. And then it let me also look at what were the averages across all eight rest periods. And I could also look at like basically every single um, statistic that Stride has available and all the data metrics. I could drill down to each one of those across the reps and the rests as well. Uh, things like uh, stride length, my power, form power, all the different kind of data that it collects. Uh, that all is something that you can take a look at, which is pretty cool. I don't know that I've seen anything like that before where it can like tease out which were the working periods and which were the rest periods and separate them out for you. So I think that's super cool. I love looking at that. And then the other thing was I could also look at each rep individually as well, as well as getting kind of like a dashboard view really quickly of like, was I in the zone for all these? It turns out for today that I wasn't in the zone for most. One, I was hot. One, I got in the zone. The rest of them, I was actually a little bit low. But here's the thing. I was a little bit confused. And here's what I had to reach out to Stride for to try to figure out an answer. I emailed them later in the day, so I haven't had a response yet. If I get a response, I'll update it uh, in a comment down below and I'll pin it to the top. So the workout that I got said I needed to be running somewhere in the 315 to like 327 power range, which for me is much faster than mile pace. And then when I got out onto the road and I was actually working, the power range it had me in was somewhere in like 285 to 297, which is pretty much, I think my critical power number is adjusted. So like my mile, like power number uh, and pace is a little bit different. So I think that's about, equivalent to mile pace is what it was asking me to run. And I don't know what it was about it because like so, even when I go back and look at it now, it's still saying that the scheduled run was supposed to have me in like 310, 315 for my reps. But the watch kept telling me that I was supposed to run it at 285. So there was a little bit of discrepancy there. I'm not sure which one what I was supposed to do. I did the one that my watch was telling me to do and now I ended up being the lower number and I had a hard enough time today hitting those paces. But a little bit of discrepancy there. Hopefully that's just like something that they could fix and push out through like an auto update. Otherwise, to generally give you an idea of like what the plans are like, I haven't looked at all and there's 5K plan, 10K, half marathon and marathon. But so far from what I've looked at at the 10K plan, uh, it's really not terribly different than the kind of work that I would normally do if I were marathon training or if I were half marathon training. Some of the intensities are a little bit higher um, and some of the durations are a little bit different, but it's, I don't, I haven't done the exact math to break it down to see if it's 80, 20, but it seems to be kind of in that range. There's a lot of easy running. There's a, a little bit of moderate running, and then there's some very intense work. So for me, what I tend to do is a lot of threshold work is what I really like to do when I'm marathon training, but this is a 10 K race plan. And so it's got a lot of like 30 seconds on 30 seconds off at mile pace. It's got one mile, one minute on one minute off at a little bit slower, like between mile and 5k pace. Now I keep saying mile and 5k pace, but the way that they structure it is by power ranges. And like, I'm familiar enough with what those numbers are to kind of equate it into like pace terms, just so that way you guys, if you're not that familiar with power numbers, or if you're, especially if you're not familiar with my power numbers, um, and they're gonna be different for each person so that you can kind of understand like what kind of intensities it's asking for. There's about two workouts a week and then a longer run on Saturday. And the long run Saturday is mostly easy running. So like 
very not really all that different it's just putting a very specific amount of structure into the workouts which is something that i've been looking for anyway uh, especially with some of these shorter distances that i really just don't know how to train for myself not to say that i'm an expert at training in the marathon but um, I have a little bit more experience in constructing marathon plans than I do 10K plans, for example. So uh, I'm going to follow this plan for the next couple weeks, and I think I'm going to see how it goes. Try to run a time trial on, on November 14th, assuming my knee holds up. I've kind of got like a weird knee issue going. Uh, today it felt really good while working. I didn't even notice it, probably because I felt like I was suffocating. <laughs> but I didn't really notice it at all while I was in the work phase. But in the cool down phase, then he started to act up a little bit. So, well, we'll see how long I can kind of hold on to this uh, 10K training plan. I almost said marathon training plan, but 10K training plan. Hit the subscribe button to see how it goes over time. I'll keep checking in with you on this stride subscription to see like if this race plan works, how good it is. Um, some things that I'm going to follow up on is now that I've kind of got this video out there and kind of a little bit of the you know, no contact period that I kind of like to maintain is will be over. I'm going to try to drill down into it and figure out like who's making these plans. How are they coming up with it? So I can get that information to you guys too. So you can kind of understand that these numbers aren't that uh, arbitrary uh, and that they are relatively specific uh, based on the numbers and the data that your stride power meter can collect from you as you wear every day on all your different runs and all your different shoes. So uh, I think it'll be a fun little adventure. I've been wanting to put myself on a 10K training plan for a while now anyway. And I think this is going to be pretty much exactly what I was looking for. So I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, if you have any questions about the subscription plan, how it works, the technical aspects of just how to get it onto your watch and how to run it, uh, feel free to leave in the comments down below. Or better yet, feel free to stop by. I do a live stream every day, 3 p.m. Central Time. You can always feel free to ask me a question there and just hang out with other runners that are going to be there as well. And we try to have a good time every day. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?